I know where there's some, right here in the hall clerk. No, no, my I What we have here, let's start with it. Let's start with this part. What we have here is a coil of wire. There's a coil of wire right here, wrapped round and round and round and round. Pretty, pretty small diameter, I would expect, uh, given the, given the, uh, the, the videos I've seen of people fixing these. Um, and then. Our, our AC from the outlet goes into here and what that does is cause this this becomes an electromagnet and it has uh, let's say for sake of argument it has a at one point it has a positive pole over here and it has a negative pole over here or north if you like and south uh, and then uh, within a cycle of the uh, the AC current going in, those two switch, this becomes north and this becomes south, and it goes back and forth at 60 cycles per second, uh, switching, switching polarities back and forth at 60 cycles per second. You'll notice these two th things right here. One of them is apparently connected to, well, let's back up a bit again. There are uh, some steel plates. They're hard to see right here. Let me get a little more light. There are a stack of steel plates right there that go through the center of the coil. And on one end is this plate, this notched plate, and on the other end is attached this notched plate. And as the electricity is going back and forth through here, creating a north-south, 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 these pole, these plates right here are going north-south, north-south, north-south. Um, and as they ratchet back and forth, they change their polarity. In the clock mechanism itself is this special gear to lift out of here. This special gear right here. And you'll notice that the gear itself, although it's toothed, it's square cut. Those are square teeth. Those aren't those aren't uh, normal gear teeth. Those are square teeth. And what happens is, as this this sits right here. right in between these two poles that are switching back and forth from north to south to north to south. And what that does is cause this thing to move. This is the motor. This is the rotor for the motor. This is the stator for the motor. So the magnetic fields that are created on these two poles right here are transferred to these teeth that you can see here. And it drags this motor uh, whichever way you spin it. <laughs> it turns out that these clocks, uh, they're spin to start right here. You can start them in the other direction so that it's spinning in the wrong direction and the clock will run backwards just as happily as it will run frontwards. But that's how this motor works. This is an alternating magnetic field pulling on this particular pulley because it has steel here and brass here. Brass isn't affected by a magnetic field, but this steel plate is, and it gets dragged uh, one way or the other, depending on which way you spin the spin to start button. So I hope that helps. That's then those, the movement of this, this wheel, this drive wheel, is transferred to the rest of the clock through all of these other uh, um, gears. Um, pretty sniffy way to Pretty smart way to do things. Now what goes wrong with these clocks, other than getting gummed up, and this one looks like it's never been cleaned, so it will be a good cleaning candidate. Um, but what goes wrong with these clocks is uh, occasionally a tooth will wear off of a gear, 
and at quick glance I don't see anything wearing off. Um, more common, I suppose, is that one of these very fine wires in this coil will uh, open, uh, will will just break, and the coil will no longer create a magnetic field. Which is why if you measure with your ohmmeter across the two leads here, and you get a resistance in the hundreds of ohms, that means the coil is probably pretty good. In fact, what I'll do right now is measure this again to make sure that I'm convinced that that coil is still pretty good. And it's 626, um, 0.626 K ohms, or 625 to 626 ohms. So that, you know, that, that should be a good coil. That shouldn't be a, a, a problem. Now, one of the viewers from a prior video asked a very good question. And if you know anything about electricity, um, you'll be able to appreciate the question. The question is, how does this little low voltage light bulb here, this is probably a, oh, I don't know, six volt bulb. And it looks, it's good, it still has a filament. How does this little light bulb get lit without being torched by um, 115 volts in the United States? And the answer, I think, is shown right here. These are the two tabs that power the bulb. Uh, this is the ground side, that's the outside, the shell, this is the inside. And you can see a couple of, oops, sorry. And you can see a couple of wires. One is here, the other is, is wrapped in insulation that goes down in here. And they both, that one actually, that's interesting. Um, that one just goes under here and goes into the transformer. So my suspicion is what they've done is they've looped a couple of extra wires around the coil. The coil will transfer electricity to those extra couple of wires and put a very low voltage AC across here. These two um, points, these two uh, contacts for the light bulb. And the low voltage AC will light, light that light bulb. Now the question becomes, how does it dim it? That's a really interesting question, and I'm not sure what the answer is yet. Um, I'm going to have to draw this schematic out, but one thing I can see is there is a plate right here. Well, this is the screw that, ad that adjusts the brilliance or dimness of the lamp. And it goes up here and touches a plate right there. I'm touching with this pencil point. And it pushes that plate closer to what looks like the base to me or further away. So we've got the clock apart, no catastrophe. Uh, what I will do is start, I will, I will go get my ultrasonic cleaner. Um, oh, one other thing to talk about regarding the gears, and I'm not sure why, but this gear right here is not metal. And it may be, hmm, I don't know why. This is a phenolic gear. This is made of sandwiched resin. Um, 
why is that why is that phenolic I'll have to do some research try to find out but I can see is the motor rotor the motor rotor right here rotates it drives this phenolic gear which in turn um, has a brass gear down here that drives this this gear here and so on and so forth um, so why is it phenolic I don't know I'll have to answer that if I can at a later at a later video but what I'm gonna do is lift these parts out put them in the ultrasonic cleaner and give them a good bath I think it's safe to do the phenolic phenolic is a is a really tough substance um, resistant to most chemicals which is why it's used so often here and there um, so I'll, I'll uh, take it apart in video and put it in the ultrasonic cleaner and then that will be the end of this video.